Hi, welcome to my home. I'm David Oman. Come on in. You've seen me on Ghost Hunters, My Ghost Story, Paranormal Witness, Haunted History, um, let's see, Ghost Adventures, Ghost Adventures, Aftershocks. Um, this is my story. This is the Omen House. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, a lot of people have asked me in the past, were you a Sharon Tate fan or a devotee? And it's like, no. He goes, well, why do you live up there? And, you know, down the street from Sharon Tate's, was it something you had to do? And it's like, to be honest with you, the house that I live in, that I built with my father that's haunted, we bought it as a foreclosure. It was $40,000. And I know that sounds strange, but this all started one Sunday morning in late November, early December, 1999, 16 years ago. My dad calls me up at eight in the morning and says, David, I found a lot. It's up in Beverly Hills. It's, uh, it's for sale. It's a foreclosure. I'm like, yeah, yeah, really, Dad? And he goes, yeah, it's $40,000. And I said, did you just say $40,000, Dad, in Beverly Hills? What is it, a vertical slope? What are you kidding me? Come on. He goes, look, this is the address I wanted you to meet. It's like, all right, I'll meet you up there. And he goes, don't waste your time. Get up your ass and get up there right now. So 20 minutes later, I'm up at this location up here in the hills. And I looked down the street and I said, oh my God, that's where the Sharon Tate murders took place. And my dad drives up. I said, hey dad, you know, that's where the Sharon Tate murders took place. And he's like, I don't care. He goes, we're looking at this piece of property. So I looked at the line and said, oh, there's, there's improvements. There's some caissons and there's rebar on this. What do you? He goes, just, just look at it. We're going to get this lot. It's $40,000. We're going to buy this lot. And we ended up buying it and we built this house on it, and this house is wildly haunted. Come on in, I'll show you some photographs and stuff, I'll give you a little mini tour. Um, by the way, since you guys are watching this at Kamikaze, I'm gonna be um, raffling off both t-shirts and posters of the movie. Shh, Terry, be quiet. That's one of my cats. This isn't important, this does not regard you, and you just keep your trap shut. So come on over here, I'll show you what I'm gonna be raffling off. First of all, we're going to be raffling off one of these baseball caps. That's right. House at the end of the drive, I survived the Omen house. No, you don't get one. You can't wear hats. And like I said, and this is what it looks like. It's a very nice, snug, snug fitting baseball cap. We also have one of these. We're going to be raffling off one of some couple of these. The house at the end of the drive t-shirts and on the reverse it says, I survived the Omen house. And yes, you will, can, and yeah, you can say you survived the Omen House. Um, and we'll be giving away a couple of uh, posters like this. Not signed, just the regular movie posters. And uh, you can meet me at, uh, here at the booth, 1248 West Hall, and we'll talk about some of the paranormal activity going on here. What I'm gonna show you right now is some of the photographs captured here at the house. Um, First of all, this is Dr. Barry Taft. You guys all know him from uh, Ghost Adventures. That's Barry Taft. This is a picture from 10 years ago. And at the time, it was the bottom of the staircase, which we will take you to. And you see this? This wasn't there. At the time I took the picture, Barry said, you know, we're getting a spike on the uh, readings. And I snapped a shot. You see this is there. This is a picture going from the kitchen this is the dining room leading into the living room. And you have this obliteration of energy here. This was 35 millimeter high speed film. This was not here when we took the picture. It only appears on the negative. This again is 35 millimeter high speed, 400 speed film. Again, the same area going into the living room from the dining room. And you can see this appears here. Oh, sorry, it's upside down. Yeah, this is it. Because here's a candlestick. So you see here the chairs. As a matter of fact, I'll put these two side by side. You see this chairs here? Same chairs here, going into the living room, and yet you have this captured. It shouldn't have been there. This was shot on the 35th anniversary of the murders 11 years ago. And this appears, this is on 35 millimeter high speed, 800 speed film. And as you notice, you can see the outline of the pillows and the entire cushions that are here, as well as the woman's purse. It shouldn't be there. 
Now, some of you might be asking why it is that I live here and why, you know, if I live here all year round. To answer your questions, yes, I live here 24-7, 365 days a year. I don't live in another location and just come here for TV shows. I actually live here. And to be honest with you, my statement really holds true. You have more to fear from the living than you do the dead. Um, to be honest with you, I don't believe in the cast with the friendly ghost routine. Um, like, a g -g ghost! Ah! Just doesn't work. You gotta figure this. Um, to quote a very famous rock musician, no one here gets out alive. And that quote is attributed to late Jim Morrison. And what he meant was, no one lives forever. No matter how many years you live, if you make it to 110, you will eventually die. And the point is, is that eventually you're going to have to deal with that when you do die. And spirits are no more than the energies of those who have passed before us. And their personalities that remain in the um, presence of our existence presently now in this um, dimension. Um, I'll show you a few more photographs shot here. This was shot here going down right here behind us in the living room. And you see this pattern again that's been reoccurring with this kind of pattern of energy of cluster of orbs. That is, again is 35 millimeter, 800 speed film on the anniversary of the murders, number 35, 11 years ago. And to show you another picture that was shot here, this was also shot the same night, several hours later, with another 35 millimeter high speed film camera. This was at the end of the drive where the tape gate was. And again, you see a replication of this pattern again. Isn't that fascinating? Two different cameras, both with 800 speed film, two different locations, one in the house, one at the end of the driveway, and they were captured. Crazy, huh? Um, one more last photo of the house here, taken here. We have this weird anomaly here that appears right over the headboard of my bed. Yet, it's again, 400 speed film, this should not be on my negative. Now, today, or while you're down here at Kamikaze, I'm going to be also screening this film, House at the End of the Drive, based on my personal experiences living here in the house. Shh! Cats, be quiet. I'm doing a show. The point is, is that um, I want you to come in and see it. It's going to be screening on Halloween, October 31st, Saturday at 5.30 p.m. in screening room 411. So come over there and see it. We'll also be doing a panel discussion on Halloween day at 2 p.m. in room 506. You should come in and listen to me talk with my, panels, with my panelists, Steve Hembry, Philip Pierce, and Lilia, and Lilia Cameron, Willis Cameron, or Cameron Willis who's gonna be here as well, talking about the paranormal activity that we've been experiencing here for the past year um, in the Mount Everest of haunted houses and the Disneyland for the dead, which is my humble home. Um, so quickly, we're gonna just give you a little quick tour of the house and I'm gonna to cut to a few different videos that were shot here in particular places. So come with me and I'll show you. First of all, this of course is the infamous Beetlejuice figures. Oh my. Son of a gun. And since today we were to have this put up literally less than an hour ago, these figurines have gotten knocked down again. Um, we'll cut to a video clip of what's going on with some of the clips. Or not. Your choice. No, or not. <laughs> With all these people watching, really, now you're not going to do it? Come on. It's because you've asked. Be cool. <laughs> Be cool. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so he calls me up one day, one half, like, a bunch of, there we go. There he is. Bunch yeah. of By the way, since we're only going to be showing you one or two clips of each one of these pieces of activity, I suggest that you go to my YouTube channel. That's www.youtube.com forward slash David Oman, O-M-A-N. And you'll be able to subscribe to those videos. And I promise you, every video that's on there is 100% genuine and real. Nothing 
I repeat, nothing is faked. I can't stand fakes. And by the way, speaking of fakes, I want to let everybody know that I have now decided that apropos of one very, very big paracelab, we'll let him go as the nameless paracelab, who wrote in a book and referred to me as a poltergeist agent. I wanted to say, it's true, I am a poltergeist agent. I represent only the finest in the hereafter bad boys, such as Jim Morrison, Jimmy James Dean, um, Keith Moon. For a while there, for, for a week actually, I was representing um, the late great Steve McQueen, but I told Steve he was too big of a prima donna to deal with, and I really just said, Steve, there are too many things I, couldn't, I can't deal with in your attitude with what your demands are. You know, man, you're not in the biggest demand right now in the hereafter, but look, Belushi's getting it all the time. I got orders for Belushi to come into everybody's party at least once or twice on Halloween. He's overbooked. And Keith Moon, you can't even talk about it. And Jim Morrison, are you kidding? Everybody's dying to have Jimmy at, his, at their party. But, you know, I've really decided that I might as well just blow it out there. I am a poltergeist agent. I have the best agency on this planet for the hereafter for all the bad boys. So just remember, you want somebody, call 424-284-8687, which is 424-284-TOUR. And that's David Oman, poltergeist agent. Now come on with me. Uh, you'll have to excuse my dogs, I've got them out and about, you know, because we're shooting this and it's real life. And you might see a cat or two, those are my cats. That's Terry, Tommy, Bianca, and Rachel. No, 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 it's Terry, Tommy, Bianca, and Samantha. Here, come on. This, by the way, is the infamous stairwell. We'll show you some video footage of uh, the activity that's gone on down here in this part of the house. Hi, now that you just saw the uh, infamous hallway with Tess has to do with some ghosts, you can always refer to that when you go onto my YouTube channel. This is the um, egress. What's very interesting is we've had people that have literally come here, when they stand up on this landing, you literally feel like you're on another plane of existence. You feel like you're on a boat sometimes, walking back and forth. It's inexplicable, the energy right on this plane, and literally it's no more than a full step up as you see, but it's a full step of energy away from what's normal, and we don't have any explanation why. Um, what's also interesting is, is if you stand at one end and you look down, it appears as though the, the room is getting tapered. Well, it actually is, because we had to do that to compensate for the amount of space in the house, and when we decided, you know, we could afford to, to narrow this down a little bit, so it gives you a real visual effect of it. And you can come here and take a look and show that to the good people. Here, take a look for yourself. Okay. Now you see that? And go further back. And watch how it does it again. It's out of the way. Do you see that? Isn't that the most bizarre sensation of it coming? And then it opens and then it closes narrower and narrower. Narrower and narrower, so it's almost like you're gone. Is that not the strangest effect you've ever seen in your life? Until the very end. So now we're going taking you guys down to the third level guest um, bedroom and the theater room, where a lot of activity has happened in this house. And it's quite um, interesting, to say the least. We were just doing a, um, an event for 20th Century Fox and the Poltergeist DVD Blu-ray release in this house. And um, actually, this is still set up from the investigations that we had here. As a matter of fact, this is the infamous little... Um... All right, so stop that. All right, turn off. There we go, turn this off. Now, as you see, this thing is not being touched, and I'll just show you, look. 
Okay, so you see I'm a terrible piano player. My point is, is that it's working. No one's touching it. It has no one's in this house except for myself and my friend Brian who's shooting this. So again, whatever you hear in this room, on that audio, know that there's... So again, whatever you hear in this room, on that audio, know that there's only two human, human beings, I don't know, I just heard a sound. <laughs> you gotta leave that in there when we, when we edit it, because I'm gonna say, you don't understand, we were just shooting and all of a sudden the recording stopped right there, that's what we're showing you this. had to refer to since when we came down the stairs the camera inexplicably just shut off so we were able to show you what was going on with that um, right now since we're here in the room and I can show you directly this is the theater room and the infamous um, UCLA man cave what I'm going to show you right now is this is where Steve had the experience where this little teddy bear flung off we're going to show you that clip right now in this very room after an investigation a couple months ago. The UCLA Bruin just fell off the wall. That's a first. <clears throat> That's not happened before. Whoever did that, thank you. you see my meter, you can make that show up, that'd be great. And also, what I also want to show you is, is besides that little figurine being knocked over, that little stuffed teddy bear, I'm going to show you the video clip of Philip Pierce down here about eight months ago with a couple of women that were sitting right on this couch over here. And that is the strangest stuff because the sounds that you hear were coming from right over there with those, these little um, mini helmets. And this is the sounds of what you hear on this video that you're about to hear. So, if you remember, when you hear that, that's what you're hearing in, that, in the video you're about to see now. I know it was dead down here until I came down here, and it started picking up in activity. I know you only want one of us sensitive. Okay, I don't want to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you no, seriously, thank you. But please stay here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
That was good. That was good. Now you saw that, right? This is crazy stuff. I'm about to bring you into the earthen ballroom where the next video you're about to see is crazy. This is where the butcher block, this 35 pound piece of butcher block, spins off the television set that was in here. That, um, one of my guests uh, had a crazy experience of dealing with. Now right here is where the television sat. So when you see the video, this is where the TV was, and this is the, where the butcher block, and you'll notice it spins off and falls off right into the ground here. This is the infamous earthen wall room, where many people who have been here have described the sensation of feeling like they're on a boat rocking back and forth. And right here is the little, um, I guess we have it as the altar to the Native American whose spirit has been, um, I guess, been captured here in this room. And I'll show you some crazy video footage that's been captured here with somebody where an object literally just comes out of the wall and just starts bouncing around and disappears. That video right now. This, now that you've seen the videos from this room and the crazy stuff that's happened both on the uh, 
closed circuit television camera and the other people who have been here with their own cameras. I'm now going to take you to the last room in the house, which is Gwendolyn's room, as I like to call it, the third level guest bedroom, the most active part of this house. So follow me. Now you might recognize this room from the ghost adventures. Right here at this very spot is where Nick came down and was literally bombarded by energy. What's funny is, is another woman that I'm about to show you the clip of was standing at this very spot. And you watch this video, she comes out to the door, she stops, she walks backwards, she then moves in an awkward fashion like this, and then like this, then came back out. And watch it, she walks out like this, stops, comes back, it's almost like she can't leave the room. Then comes this way to this, this sliding glass door and pressed up against the, the, the um, sliding glass mirror and she's screaming insanely. And what's funny is, is if you watch, when you watch the video, this woman, or this girl that's standing here says, describing that there's a large amount of energy right here in the threshold of this room. And I'm standing right here at the time talking to her and saying, yeah, I feel it too when I walk in. So watch that. Some type of energy. She fell through that doorway and stopped. He kept going back and forth. And he said it differed from here to there. Right there. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. My ears, I'm seeing a pressure in my inner ear, right? And I walked yeah. this side. I walked through the door. Who did? What? Oh, no. Yeah. She did not. Yeah. I already showed the same photo. Mm -hmm. And then the last clip I'm going to show you will be from three weeks ago on the 29th of September when we had the um, people here for the Poltergeist DVD release. And um, that was crazy. That's when Jimmy Ostrom was down here and he was over there at that door trying to get in and the door is locked. Watch the video. You'll notice that he's not kidding. He goes to the door, he tries to unlock it and it's locked. I come in and the next thing you know is he's like, no dude, it's locked. I said, it's not locked. What are you talking about? He goes to the door and he opens it. And the door has to lock with a little mechanism that you have to push a button in to manually lock the door. Um. Is anybody in here? Can you give us a knock?
I gotta get, I've walked to the store several times. I can hear it. Right there, there's someone's in there trying to get out. It's locked, and I'm assuming you guys it's locked. locked. Oh, they locked it, yeah. Yeah, they locked it. Oh. Oh. Not anymore. Okay, that's weird, because it was locked. It was locked. And you have to unlock it by turning the lock on the back of it. You can't, unless you pop the lock. We just tried it, too, didn't we? Yeah, it was just locked a couple seconds ago. Yeah. So that's, okay. The little girl's here. I'm telling you right now, this little girl, Gwendolyn, is here right now beyond a shadow of a doubt. I've never, ever, in the entire 13 years I've lived here, dressed this room up to look like a room in some other house in some Weird fact, but they never did it, obviously. Mm. They did fun with this room, though. Well, now I feel like it's great. Well, no digital lights. Okay, you know what to do? I'll turn them on right now. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll Photoshop it later. I'll make it all better. Yeah. yeah. The lights? No, that's the keyboard. That's the keyboard. No fucking way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm dead serious. If you Thank God you're on and you captured that. I'm making a mark at that. We got two of those, dude. We got two of those. No, wait a second. Did the, did the keys, did the keys themselves? So come on in, I'll show you the, uh, the guest bedroom. This is the craziest part of the house, as I said before. Um, it's just nuts. So do me a favor, make sure you look at the YouTube channel. Again, youtube.com forward slash David Owen. That's O-M-A-N. And subscribe to the uh, channel. And remember to watch us tonight at House at the End of the Drive at Screening Room 411. And also House at the End of the Drive.com. And if you like, follow us on Instagram on The Omen at The Omen House. And at House End of Drive. Thank you very much. Uh, Whoa, right there it is. Come on, you guys. What the fuck? Wow. I saw it as soon as you guys saw it. I saw it the same time you saw it. He was doing a pirouette right up the screen. That right there. Uh uh. No, that's not what we saw. No, there was something that go a little further back. A little orbish. Why is that doing? Why is that doing? Because she's flashing. There's lots of. Whoa, right there. But that wasn't it. was going up. No, it was a big one. There's one across the bottom. It went right up to the middle. Damn. Those things are too intense light wise to be anything. It came from the bottom to doing the street. No, look right there. Did you no, see that one? It. No, no, it didn't either. What it's was that? No, it wasn't it. Who's writing down the time code on this guy? That's just us up there. It is. But the one coming up on the. All we are is dust in the wind, Norman. monitoring the monitor. <laughs> you again? Let me see that pen, yeah. <laughs> what you want? <laughs> You want my ass? Is that your De Niro or something? What, what do, you, do you do? You think I'm funny? Do I amuse you? Do I amuse you? Do I amuse you? Do you think I'm a fucking clown? What the hell is so fucking funny about me? Am I fucking Lucille Ball and drag? Oh what in the God. hell is it? You really are bugging the crap out of me, you know. Mm. Yeah? Bam! Nice.
go. When I bring down different, um, you know, I bring down There's the compass better. here, the compass, you, we found out through bringing the compass down that the field compass reacted to this piece of metal, which is nothing more than a um, crescent wrench, 10 inch crescent wrench made of steel alloy. Steel, uh, steel, steel alloy. Now watch, look at this. Here, pull it away again, and then, so it goes at 400, which is average, it's right in the middle. Normal, right, look at and this. skyrockets to over 3,400. And then what, what happens when I put it to the other side? Look at that. That's a 6,500 milligauss. And look at the numbers on the z-axis. It's over 5,000. The y-axis, it's a, it's all negative. Look at this. This is impossible. Well, the thing that's amazing about this is you don't actually have to know what any of these numbers mean to know that they're they're all literally off the chart. The chart. I had it go to at, zero at 400. I had it almost at zero for a second there. I saw I got a single digits. Like I said, this down. is impossible because this little puppy is nothing more than a regular crescent wrench that I left here. And through it's just being here in this environment, it's turned into a complete magnetized piece of equipment. It's impossible. Excuse me, I'm gonna see what's wrong with my... my... It literally went down to 300 when you set it down. So now I'm holding it. 300 at 100. Can you grab the crescent? Actually, don't grab the crescent. Let me grab it. So this is at 100 positive. I'm gonna move this. Look at that. I mean, I need a drink. All positive numbers 1700. Are you cold in there?